there is a story of ambition, exploitation, and consequence woven into the complex fabric of international trade. This tale is set in a country with rich natural scenery, diverse cultures, and unexplored wealth. A place where the promise of prosperity coexists with the specter of exploitation. Accompany us as we dive into the intricacies of this story, following its origins to a corporation whose name is synonymous with authority and controversy, as well as to a nation whose future is closely linked to the wealth that lies beneath its surface. Shell Oil, one of the largest multinational oil corporations globally, has a complex and contentious history regarding its operations in Nigeria, even though it has contributed significantly to the nation's oil industry, accusations of exploitation and criticism have been leveled at its actions. First, let us discuss the company and its unexpected ascent to its current position. Founded on a blend of entrepreneurial spirit and visionary foresight, Shell has emerged as a titan in the realm of energy, shaping the course of history and innovation. At the heart of this monumental success lies the indomitable spirit of Marcus Samuel, the man whose determination and ingenuity laid the foundation for one of the world's leading energy corporations. Marcus Samuel was born into a family deeply entrenched in the import-export business in Victorian England. Born on November 5, 1853, in London, Samuel inherited the spirit of commerce from his father who ran a successful business trading in seashells. Despite coming from modest beginnings, Samuel exhibited an insatiable thirst for knowledge and a relentless drive for success from an early age. Before embarking on his journey to establish Shell Oil Company, Samuel honed his business acumen through various ventures. He joined his father's company and showed his aptitude for trade right away. Samuel saw the opportunities presented by the quickly changing global environment especially the growing need for oil as a fuel and energy source. He saw an opportunity and entered the kerosene trade, setting the foundation for his future undertakings. Samuel's pivotal moment came with the advent of the oil boom in the late 19th century. Witnessing the transformative power of oil firsthand, he envisioned a company that would not only capitalize on this burgeoning industry, but also redefine the standards of excellence. In 1897, Samuel founded the Shell Transport and Trading Company, marking the dawn of a new era in the world of energy. This innovative company specialized in bulk kerosene transportation using tankers, a groundbreaking strategy that made distribution more effective and economical. Samuel's creative use of tankers to move oil signaled a revolution in the sector. By simplifying logistics and cutting down on transportation expenses, as Shell Oil Company expanded its operations, it encountered formidable competitors in the oil market. One notable rival was the Standard Oil Company, founded by John D. Rockefeller. Standard Oil dominated the American oil industry with its aggressive tactics, including vertical integration and control over refining, transportation, and distribution. In response to competition, Shell Oil Company embarked on strategic initiatives, including expanding its global footprint through acquisitions and partnerships. Samuel's vision and business savvy guided the company through periods of intense competition, cementing its position as a key player in the oil industry. The journey was fraught with challenges, from navigating geopolitical landscapes to overcoming technical hurdles. Yet, Samuel's unwavering resolve and innovative spirit propelled Shell to unprecedented heights. Under his leadership, the company pioneered groundbreaking technologies, revolutionized distribution networks, and forged strategic alliances, cementing its status as a global powerhouse. Nigeria, with its vast oil reserves, soon caught the attention of Samuel and his company. Exploiting Nigeria's oil wealth, however, wasn't merely a matter of drilling rigs and pipelines. It involved navigating intricate geopolitical landscapes and forming alliances with local governments. In the mid-20th century, Shell, along with other oil majors, established a presence in Nigeria, bringing with them technological expertise and economic promises. 
at first glance. The partnership between Shell and the Nigerian government seemed mutually beneficial, with the company offering essential infrastructure and knowledge while the government profited from oil earnings. The Niger Delta, where much of Nigeria's oil is extracted, became a focal point of contention. Local communities accused Shell of neglecting environmental safeguards, leading to pollution, land degradation, and disruption of traditional ways of life. One of the key issues surrounding Shell's operations in Nigeria is the environmental impact, particularly in the Niger Delta. Oil spills and leaks have occurred frequently, contaminating water sources, damaging ecosystems, and negatively impacting the livelihoods of local communities, which rely on fishing and agriculture for their sustenance. Nearly 14,000 Nigerians from the communities of Ogale and Biela have taken Shell to court over the devastating impact of pollution. They claim that their ability to farm and fish has been destroyed by the continuing oil spills from Shell's operations. The population's health has been affected by these environmental disruptions, which include skin conditions, respiratory issues, and other conditions linked to exposure to oil pollutants. Moreover, social unrest and conflict have been reported in the Niger Delta region. These events have been partially attributed to grievances arising from the perceived marginalization and exploitation of local communities by oil companies such as Shell. The lack of equitable distribution of wealth generated from oil revenues and the failure to adequately address the concerns of affected communities have exacerbated tensions and contributed to a cycle of poverty and instability. There have been protests and resistance from various Nigerian communities against Shell's presence and practices. These protests often highlight the negative impacts on their livelihoods, health, and environment communities have demanded better compensation, environmental remediation, and increased local involvement in decision-making processes regarding oil extraction. Despite these protests, the Nigerian government's response has sometimes been perceived as favorable towards Shell. The government's reliance on revenue from the oil industry and its historical ties with multinational corporations like Shell have led to accusations of complicity and bias. Some argue that the government has prioritized the interests of corporations over those of its citizens, leading to a lack of accountability and justice for affected communities. Nobody is there to stop Shell from abusing Nigeria and its resources, even though there are numerous cases filed against them. Why is that? Maybe it is because in addition to its revenue, it gives the Nigerian government millions of dollars. As a gift to allow them to take advantage of innocent people's lives and the natural beauty of a prosperous and healthy nation. The company has been pushed to explain its role in a $1.1 billion corruption scandal in Nigeria. The money allegedly ended up in the bank account of a private firm owned by Nigeria's former oil minister, Dan Atit who is now under criminal investigation for his involvement in the affair. Shell has made substantial payments to the Nigerian government. In 2020, it paid a total of about $3.2 billion to the Nigerian government, including production entitlements, company income tax, and other taxes. In 2022, Shell Petroleum Development Company Limited and Snepco paid $1.36 billion in royalties and corporate taxes to the Nigerian government. In conclusion, Shell's experience in Nigeria is a sobering reminder of the complex relationship that exists between the interests of corporations and the welfare of society. It is our responsibility as consumers and citizens to look past the surface-level rhetoric of advertising and face the hard realities that lie there. We must demand fairness, justice, and transparency from corporations and hold them responsible for their actions. Make sure to let us know your thoughts about this case and what we should do about it, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time.